All right, this is unit six, day two lesson. Uh, last time we started working with rational expressions a bit and we uh, primarily simplified them and we did include multiplying them together. Today we're just gonna focus on how to add and subtract these sorts of things. So our first question, I wanted to relate it back to uh, how you already know how to deal with fractions a little bit. If we have one fifth and we want to add two fifths to that, I think most of you know that that would be the same as three fifths. So the, the one and the two add together in the numerator and the denominator stays the same. Um, and that works if you think back to like long time ago fractions. Um, if we have a, really ugly pie chart um, fifths. If we start out with one fifths and we add two more fifths to that, you can see that we do indeed have three fifths. It doesn't change what type of fraction it is. These are all fifths. Uh, we're just counting up how many we have and that's how adding works in math is we're, um, we're just adding up how many. And in this case, we have three fifths. So with rational expressions, it works the same way. If I have four over two X, and I want to add three more over two X, the total would be seven over two X. Now the important thing to note here is that this works because we already have a common denominator. So remember that the denominator is the bottom of the fraction and when it says common denominator, it means that these two are the same. They both are over two X. That worked here up at the top because they were both fifths. So in order to add two fractions, we do have to have that common denominator. Um, so let's just practice a couple. Um, these already have a common denominator. My first denominator is x plus 4 and my second denominator is x plus 4. It's the same and that denominator is not going to change and we just have to think about uh, our numerator now. We have an x and we're adding 3. Well those are not like terms. We can't combine them so it will just stay as an x plus 3 and that is finished. For number 2 we have a common denominator here. It's x minus 2 so that denominator is not going to change when we do the addition. But here I have a 3x and I'm subtracting an x. So I have a 3x minus x. Uh, 3x minus x, well that's like a 3x minus a 1x, so that's a total of 2x and then that would be divided by x minus 2. That would be our final answer. So with a common denominator already, uh, that denominator won't change and we just need to uh, add or subtract the numerators. Uh, and, and if you have any like terms that need to be combined, you should combine those as well. Okay, so on this one, we again have a common denominator. Our denominator is an x squared plus a 2x minus 3. And that's not going to change. The two denominators are the same. That's not going to change. Uh, and let's look at the numerator here. We have an x plus 4 and we're subtracting 1. Well, if I combine the like terms there, that's an x plus 3 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now, we may be able to simplify this a little bit more, so I want to try factoring that denominator just to see. So if I have uh, an x squared plus 2x minus 3. I'm thinking of factors of negative 3 and they need to add up to 2. So that would be an x plus 3 and an x minus 1. And you can see that we have a small cancellation here. We have an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 is 1. So our solution here would simplify to 1 over x minus 1. What about this one? One half plus three x plus five over x. Um, again, when you think way back to fractions, you can only add if you have a common denominator. 
make you write it like four times so that you'll remember denominator. I can spell. Uh, so in this case, we can't add these two expressions together yet. That's a big yet though. Uh, so let's remember how to deal with two fractions if we don't have a common denominator. Um, essentially, you just make it so that you have a common denominator. So if I wanted to add, we're going to start with just numbers. If I wanted to add one-third and three-fourths together, I need to get a common denominator. And in this case, one of my denominators has a factor of three and the other has a factor of four. So the least common denominator would be those things multiplied together, three times four our common denominator is going to be 12. So I would take that one third and to have this be a denominator of 12, I would times it by four over four. Now that doesn't change the quantity. It's still equal to one third because four over four is the same as the number one. So it's one third times one. All it does is change uh, the, the form of it, it's still equivalent. It'll be now 4 over 12, and 4 over 12 is equal to 1 third. So I'm not changing the problem or changing the quantity, I'm only changing uh, what it looks like for a minute. Our second part was 3 fourths. Well, in order for that to um, have a common denominator of 12, I need to times that by 3 over 3. And again, that's the same as multiplying it by one. So it's not changing the quantity. Uh, it's just putting it in a different form. And that would be then nine over 12. So now we have four over 12 plus nine over 12. They now have a common denominator and we can add them to get 13 over 12. And that would be our solution for the sum of those two fractions. So let's look at that with rational expressions. Um, so back to this problem, one half plus three x plus five over x. Um, you want to just kind of think about what you have in each of your denominators. Well, I have a factor of two over here, and I have a factor of x over here. So my common denominator is going to be two x. So I want both of these to have a denominator of 2x. Well, that first uh, part of it, 1 half, it already has the 2, but it needs the x. So I'll times this by x over x. The second term there has an x already in its denominator, but it doesn't have the 2. So I need to times this one by 2 over 2. I'm going to write it over there because I'm afraid if I try to sneak it in, it'll be too tight. So I'll write what I have now. I have a 1x over a 2x plus, I have my 2x that I wanted in this denominator, um, but what I have is a 3x plus 5 times a 2 in the numerator. Well, that two needs to distribute to both parts. It's not going to just times one, it's going to times both. So I'm going to rewrite that one X over two X and I'm going to add six X plus 10 over two X when I distribute that. Now we have a common denominator and I can just add those two together and combine like terms. It'll be a seven X plus 10 over two X. And I can't simplify that at all. The top um, expression, the numerator, is not factorable. Uh, so it just is as simple as it gets. So let's look at number five. Uh, this one is uh, one that really has a lot of people make mistakes on very commonly. Um, so the common denominator here, I have in this first term, oops, sorry, my first term has a factor of x minus 4. My second term has just a factor of x. 
those two things are, are just two separate factors. So my common denominator is going to be x times x minus 4. It has to have both parts of it. But what I often see people do, and it's incorrect, is that they'll just try to subtract 4 somehow. But I can't add or subtract. I would have to multiply, and multiplying by negative 4 does not work. It doesn't help at all. That would give me a negative 4x, which is not the same as x minus 4. So remember, whatever you do to the top and bottom here, you're multiplying by something, not adding or subtracting something. Uh, so I want it to have a common denominator of x times x minus 4. So it looks like this first term is just missing the x. So we'll put an x top and bottom. And the second part of it um, here is missing the x minus 4. So now we have two, uh, we have two parts that both have that common denominator that we wanted. So the common denominator is this. I have a 3x and then I'm subtracting a 2 times an x minus 4. Now we can simplify that numerator just a bit. Uh, we could distribute this negative 2, and I would probably distribute the negative with the 2 myself. So we have a 3x, and we have a minus 2x, and that negative 2 times the negative 4 gives me a positive 8. And that's divided by that same denominator. Now sometimes people like to multiply this out. Uh, you can if you want, but it's not necessary. You can leave it factored is just fine. Uh, let's see, last step, we do have just a couple of terms here that we can combine. It's going to be, oh, it's going to be an x plus 8 over x times x minus 4. And that can be our final answer. There's nothing really we could do to simplify that. My highlighter disappeared up there. Okay, so this is challenging, no doubt about it, uh, but... If you practice and do your homework, you'll be okay. We're going to just go through a couple more examples. So we have, in example 6, we have 7 over x plus 4, and we would like to subtract 2 from that. Now, this one can be tricky for people because there's literally not a denominator uh, shown in the picture. But if it's 2, that's the same as 2 over 1. So we can think of that as just a denominator of 1 if we like, if that helps us. So uh, our common denominator is just going to be x plus 4. We have a 1 and we have an x plus 4, so x plus 4 will work. So the first, uh, the first part of that has the x plus 4 denominator that we want. We don't have to modify it at all, uh, but we need to, for this second part, for the minus 2, multiply both the top and the bottom by x plus 4. So now we have a common denominator of x plus 4. So I have 7 minus 2 times x plus 4. Well, we can simplify that just a bit. We can distribute the negative 2. 7 minus 2x, and we have a negative 2 times a positive 4. So that's going to be a negative 8. That's over x plus 4. Um, the two terms in the numerator that can combine this time are the 7 and the negative 8. So we have a negative 2x. I like to lead with my highest power. And then 7 minus 8 is negative 1. So we have negative 2x minus 1 over x plus 4. And that's fine. Uh, sometimes you'll see people do things like factor that negative out, and if you want to, you can, but it's not necessary. Either of those answers would be fine. All right, 7, x plus 4 over x minus 1, and we'd like to add 5 over x squared minus 1. So we need to think about what factors are present in each of these uh, terms. So in this first in this first part, we have a denominator of x minus 1, so that's fine. In the second part, though, uh, 
we we have a couple of factors, not just one, but right now it's not factored. So let's factor this and figure out what factors we have. X squared minus one is a difference of squares. It's the same as X plus one times X minus one. So you can see that it actually also has that factor of X minus one, but it has another factor of X plus one as well. So right now, both of our parts have a denominator of x minus 1, uh, but the second one has an additional factor of x plus 1. So our common denominator is going to be x plus 1 times x minus 1. You just have to think about which factors are present, and you need to have a common denominator that includes all of the factors. So our second part here already has everything it needs. It's just the first part that is missing an x plus 1. So now we have the common denominator between both of our terms. I'll put some parentheses there now. Uh, our denominator is x plus 1 and x minus 1. Um, for that first part, we have x plus 1 times x plus 4. It's going to multiply both parts there, and then we're adding 5 to that. Uh, so if we want to simplify this, we need to multiply out this little part, these two binomials. So we get an x squared plus a 4x plus a 1x, and if you can do this in your head, that's great, plus a 4, and then we're still adding 5 to that, so don't forget that plus 5 is still there. And that's all over x plus 1 times x minus 1. If I combine my like terms, I've got an x squared, I have a 4x and a 1x for a total of 5x, and I have a 4 and a 5 for a total of 9. My denominator didn't change. So it's good when you get to this point where everything's combined to sort of ask yourself if it's factorable. But in this case, um, x squared plus 5x plus 9 is not factorable. That's as simple as we can get it. All right, we're going to look at two more, and, uh, and then we'll be done for the day. So if we're looking at these two uh, little parts that we want to add together, we want to add x minus 8 over x minus 9, and we want to subtract, I guess, x plus 2 over x plus 1. So we have to think about which factors are present, and we have to have a common denominator that includes all of the factors. So I have right now an x minus 9 in this uh, part and I have an x plus 1 here. So my common denominator is going to be the product of those two things, x minus 9 times x plus 1. And it's, it's okay to leave that as is, you don't need to multiply it out. So my first part, I'm going to rewrite it to give myself a little, oops, a little more room. The first part has the x minus 9, but it's missing the x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply it by x plus 1 over x plus 1. The second part has the x plus 1, and what it is missing is the x minus 9. So now I have a common denominator here, an x plus 1 times x minus 9. So I'm going to go ahead and combine these two into one expression. Uh, written as is, there's not a lot I can do to combine it, but if we multiply each of these binomials out, we'll definitely have some terms that can combine. So I have an x squared and a positive x, a negative 8x, and a negative 8. This is all going to be over my same denominator. 
and I also need to multiply out this expression, but whatever this is equal to when it's multiplied out, it's going to be subtracted. Uh, so I want to leave that subtraction symbol there for a minute, and I'm going to write whatever that product is. So x squared minus 9x plus 2x minus 18. And all of those things are being subtracted. So I can combine these two together to have an x squared minus 7x minus 8. And I can combine these two terms together for x squared minus 7x minus 18. And when you're doing this, you probably won't write out each of these steps individually. You'll probably do some of them as combined steps. So we need to distribute this negative. So that will give us a minus x squared, a plus 7x, and a plus 18. And now finally I can look to see if any of my terms combine. I've got a positive x squared here and a negative x squared. That adds up to zero, so those are gone. I have a negative 7x and a positive 7x. Those two are gone. And then I have a negative 8 and a positive 18. Well, that adds up to 10. So I have 10 over x minus 9, x plus 1. And that would be uh, the most simple form you could put this in. Now, again, you could, I guess, technically multiply this out, but it's not necessary to multiply out your denominator. Wow, I cannot spell necessary. There we go. <laughs> All right, one last one. This one looks quite complicated. I have a 1 over an x squared minus 3x, and I want to add that to x plus 2 over 5x minus 15. So again, we need to identify the denominator that we want to have, the common denominator. And to identify the common denominator, we really need to know what factors are present in each of the two terms. So if I think about this denominator, this first denominator here, I have an x squared minus 3x. Well, that's the same as x times x minus 3 if we factor it. And this second part of the expression has a denominator of 5x minus 15. Well, if I factor that, it's a 5 times an x minus 3. So if we think about all of the factors that are present, we have an x, we have an x minus 3. This one also has an x minus 3, and we have a 5. Our common denominator is going to be the combination of all three of those. We're going to have a 5 and an x and an x minus 3 as our common denominator. So now we just need to think about what each of the parts needs in order to have that common denominator. Well, the first part already has the x, and it already has the x minus 3. It's just missing the 5. So we're going to times this one by 5 over 5. And again, we're just multiplying by 1, so we're not changing the quantity. It's 5 over 5, both the top and the bottom. The second part of the expression already has the 5, and it already has the x minus 3. It's just missing the x. So we'll times both the top and the bottom by x. So now both of our denominators have all of the same parts. So we end up with 5, 1 times 5 is 5, plus, and we have an x times an x plus 2, and that's over 5x times x minus 3. Now we can distribute this x. So we now have a 5 plus an x squared plus 2x over 5x times x minus 3. 
And then finally, we want to look and see if there are any like terms we can combine. But in this case, there's not. So I'm just going to rewrite it in standard form. And that would be our final answer, x squared plus 2x plus 5 over 5x times x minus 3. Again, it might be a good idea to check this top, this numerator, to see if it could factor a little bit, but there aren't factors of 5 that add up to 2, so it's not factorable. And if it's not factorable, we just leave it. If it was factorable, we would perhaps want to factor it just to see if we could um, reduce any of the terms or any of the factors, sorry, but in this case, it's not. All right, in class, we did a couple of practices, and that's it. So the assignment is in your notes packet. It's uh, salmon colored. If you need help, please come in, and I'll, I'll get you some help. Um, I know this is kind of challenging, so do your best. I'll post some answer keys on the website so you can check your work. Thank you.